Stan Schmidt, sixth Dan, highest ranking Westerner in the Japan Karate Association, gold medalist in the All Japan Team event. Just returned from Japan, Stan has trained there more than 15 times over the last 20 years. He has trained with all the senseis, the masters, forming a close friendship with Masahiko Tanaka, the total master. Tanaka, twice world champion, the perfect example of the Japanese fighting machine. Respected worldwide as a teacher, he is one of the trainers of the Japanese squad, a man of tremendous hypnotic intensity. Karate, from the land of the rising sun, now with a worldwide following of millions devoted to its special skills and disciplines. Stan and his pupils warm down now with some light sparring. Come here. Hey, okay, was... hey. Well, it's really good to be back with all of you again. In Japan, I worked out every day with Tanaka. You all know him very well. And uh, I tell you, it wasn't easy. Very interesting how the Japanese prepare their fighting machine. How they produce that winning blow. All of you, I believe, have very excellent fighting spirit. You've got good technique. But I believe in order to enter that arena, to get to the top of that ultimate arena, you're going to have to penetrate and understand the Japanese way. To understand the Japanese way requires, very simply, unquestioning total discipline and dedication to the true fighting spirit. Look, the main quality that the Japanese have is that they anticipate the blow and they get in before it arrives. Karate is the perfection of reflexes beyond even the speed of a bullet. The philosophy of controlled power and the will to win embodied in the martial arts is exemplified in the outward growth and visible achievements of Japan, with the great city of Tokyo the pulse beat of this industrial and economic giant. It is reflected too in the inner world of the dojo, hour upon hour of training and effort in the unending quest for perfection. These are the sensei, the masters, the elite, within the inner sanctum of the JKA. But from this recessed world, karate has also to reach out into the changing external environment. Here, leaving attachments behind, they merge with the countryside build their spirit in preparation for those encounters in the arena of life. But winning is just the tip of the sword. What counts is the hard training in traditional forms. The dedication, the repetition, the pain. This is where it all begins. The true soul of karate reaches back all the way to childhood, to the heart of the ancestral Japanese traditions in the martial arts, symbolized by the reverence for the great samurai sword, proudly preserved down the generations for hundreds of years. This is Shinsuke Seto, one of my best friends. He first welcomed me to Japan as a white belt 20 years ago. He's a living embodiment of the modern Japanese spirit, successful in business and the martial arts, as symbolized by the sword. But karate transcends weaponry, for the way of the empty hand is much more than a sword. With karate, the molding of the Japanese fighting machine starts at the very beginning. These eight-year-olds are already black belts, first dance. But then, in their own minds and bodies, the journey has just begun. Ahead lies high school, where the techniques, powerful and precise, will be blended with discipline in the search for perfection. Through these actual rhythms, they transcend the steps of a pyramid, at the zenith of which lies a fresh control of self, body and mind. Hey! 
You're about to see two kata training led by Tanaka. This kata training is a fight against imaginary opponents, developing of both the inner and outer man. The transition from training to competition is like an emergence from the crystallis of inner concentration into the probing light of competitive kata. For if karate is a language, then kata is the poems and philosophies of that language, or to relate it back to the samurai traditions, the honing and tempering of the sword. More than training is the search for zanshin, total control. To achieve it is an arduous journey, finding the way to the inner self, entering the void. The principles of the five rings, air, water, earth, fire, and the void, are both the keys in the quest for zanshin, and also the constituents that make up the organic entity of the fighting machine. Air, a feather touch, light as the wind, flexible, mutable. Fluid, flowing, not obvious, but with a deep underlying power. Earth, where growth begins, solid, rugged and enduring. Sudden, fierce intensity, the impact of lightning, the thunderbolt, Ipod, the winning blow. Once the cup is filled with these, it must be emptied, then like a polished mirror, all is perceived clearly. This is Zanshin. Total control is counterpointed with freedom of creativity and imagination, freedom to express and discover, for ultimately the kingdom of heaven is within. In the world outside, the time of competitions is at hand. Tokyo, the Budokan, the great martial arts center, circular in shape to symbolize both unity of aims and rounding of character. The golden dome symbolizes excellence of quality. Now the taiko drums pound out the pulse beat of the martial arts. As many as 2,000 competitors for the 22nd All Japan JKA Karate Championships. The architect of this formidable fighting machine is Masatoshi Nakayama, chief instructor. The first committee about. Number one, Mori, the world champion, confronts Yamamoto. Next, Osaka, 
twice world karate champion versus Tabata. If karate is a language, a body language, then Kumite is the argument, confrontation and debate in that language. You also that excellent technique from Osaka. Now watch for Yahara. He's a personification of dynamism and agility. Yahara versus Kasuya. And so the final, and a confrontation of titans. Mori number one versus Omura. The ultimate aim of karate is not victory or defeat, but the perfection of the character of its participants. In these Kumite tournaments, the object is to deliver Ippon, the winning blow. But that, though lethal, must be controlled just short of impact. Finding the breakthrough, Omura strikes with superhuman speed to win honor and victory. Like the seasons, the championships come and go. Prior to the start of the 24th All Japan JK Karate Championships, competitors limber up to attain the suppleness and control vitally necessary in competition. Tsuchi, number 51, on the start of his victory road. Tetsu, number 64, from Okinawa, ancestral home of karate, versus Sakata, number 99. <laughs> For Mori, the Goliath of Karateka, an effortless victory. Yahara, number 74, eliminates his opponent with consummate ease. Two days of ongoing eliminations lead to the semi-finals. Tatetsu, number 64, versus Imura, number 89. Victory to Tatetsu. Here's Mori, current world champion. 230 pounds of sheer power, feared for his devastating leg sweeps. In the second semi final, Mori number one and Tuchii number 51. Victory for Tsuchi. Did you see that winning blow? Something like this. Now for the final between Tatetsu and Tsuchi.
from Tsuchi at the end. The winning blow. Victory and honor for the Japanese in their homeland. Now they're ready to take on the rest of the world. Los Angeles, California. Setting for the largest international karate tournament ever held. Top contingents from 28 countries pack the colossal stadium. Even in practice, the tremendous discipline of karate comes on strong. Kumite, Theodore Hedlund of Sweden versus Sergio Baronzo of Italy. A win for Italy. Edwin F. Moyes Jr. of the United States versus Pal Gudjonsson of Denmark. A win for the United States. The techniques which make up Kumite require tremendous skill and control, and a split second mistiming can bring explosive contact. While the Japanese systematically demolished the opposition, European champion Bruno de Michelis of Italy and Gregory G. Pickerel of the United States shape up in an all-action Kumite bout. A tense, stalking confrontation, sizing up the opponent, searching for that critical breakthrough that will decide the issue. And Bruno finds it, clinching victory for his team. Next up is Kata, the Japanese team. They've gone beyond sheer balletic movement. Their katas are theorems of self-defense, applied. But first, a glimpse of the styles of other international teams. Here, it's the British. Carter, Canadian style. The men from Maple Leaf country show their form. Finally, the Japanese, as noted, classic exponents of the art. Three modern-day gladiators moving in precise harmony, their shadows on the arena floor looking like ancient birds of prey. The slow-motion camera reveals the impossibility of complete perfection, even from these, the world's greatest karate athletes. Into the Kumite Finals, with European champion Bruno de Michelis versus Masahiko Tanaka. Tanaka's legendary speed and power ensure victory for Japan. Sergio Baronzo of Italy faces Takeshi Oishi, who unleashes a fistful of dynamite. This is the Japanese connection. Now it's the turn of the Germans. The Jurgen Bullrot for all his fancy footwork provides no match for Mikio Yahara. Tanaka again, this time versus Werner Putkin. Tanaka is the classic example of a karate master who embodies his own identity in his fighting techniques. The German attacks, but Tanaka dispatches him with ease and delivers the winning blow. But this is much more than just triumph. Ippon, the winning blow, lasts only a moment. Friendship lasts a lifetime. And embracing the nations of the world, friendship becomes the prime aim of the international language of karate.